Over the past four decades, Shenzhen has transformed from a modest town into one of the world's most significant and economically powerful cities. In 2018, its GDP surpassed its neighboring metropolis, Hong Kong, a long-standing global trade hub, positioning Shenzhen as the world's eighth most populous city. This marks a dramatic shift from its status as a relatively average town just 40 years ago. Shenzhen's remarkable evolution reflects a broader trend across China, where numerous cities have emerged as formidable economic centers. The reforms initiated in select regions have now been widely implemented nationwide, catalyzing substantial economic progress. China has experienced unprecedented economic expansion, upon which numerous social, political, and economic structures have become dependent. However, this rapid economic growth has not been without challenges, both within China and on the global stage. Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel today. We are discussing why China's economy could be crumbling. The nation's economy has experienced a significant shift, transitioning from nearly 10% annual growth rates before the pandemic to approximately 5%. In simpler terms, this indicates that the Chinese economy is currently generating 5% more goods and services than it did in the previous year. China's economic strategy has been predicated on the expectation of maintaining robust growth rates well above 5% for an extended period. This assumption has influenced major financial commitments from various sectors, including government entities at every level, from national to local, as well as businesses and individual families. All these groups made significant investments based on the belief that the nation's economy would sustain the rapid expansion witnessed from 1980 to 2010. These urban development initiatives required financial contributions from various sectors. Governments invested in essential infrastructure, businesses took on the construction of buildings and provision of services, and individuals put their money into apartments in cities yet inhabited. Given the rapid pace of the country's growth, it was anticipated that these new urban areas would eventually become populated as people migrated to them. However, with this approach to economic development, even a slight decrease in growth rates, despite being considered strong by Western standards, could lead to significant consequences, potentially resulting in entire cities remaining vacant and financial losses for all parties involved in the development projects. China Railway Corporation and many regular households in China have invested a lot of money, especially in real estate which is extremely expensive in big cities. People were inspired by cities like Shenzhen, which transformed from a small fishing village to a major global commerce center in just a few decades. They hoped other cities in China could do the same and invested their life savings in properties, expecting these places to grow and their investments to pay off. The reality is that for many years, fewer people have been moving from rural areas to big cities in China. For the first time in modern history, not counting times of war, China's population is getting smaller. This shows that the practice of constantly building, thinking that the country will always grow and fill up new spaces, couldn't go on forever. The real estate sector is a prime example of how overly optimistic expectations for future economic growth have led to reckless decision-making across various economic levels. However, this issue isn't confined to real estate. It spans numerous sectors, including infrastructure, trade agreements, and large-scale international endeavors like the Belt and Road Initiative. The Belt and Road Initiative has yet to turn out as successfully as hoped. It has resulted in a significant amount of loans that may never be paid back, transforming China into a worldwide debt collector. This outcome is in stark contrast to the initiative's initial objective, which was to garner support from developing nations across the globe. China is facing a challenging financial situation, because its economy relies heavily on continuous growth and borrowing money. This has led to unstable financial conditions, including overpriced housing and stock markets, and economic corruption. China is dealing with a huge amount of debt, as much as 360% of its GDP, and the situation is getting worse because of deflation, which means the prices of goods and services are decreasing. While lower prices might seem reasonable, it can be a sign of serious problems in the economy, like people not spending money because they are earning less or are worried about the future. Deflation can also slow economic growth, make it harder for businesses to increase wages, and discourage people from spending or investing money. This is especially problematic for China because its economy relies heavily on low-cost manufacturing. If wages don't go down with deflation, China could lose its competitive edge in this industry. All these issues would be less of a problem if China's economy were still growing very fast, but it's not, and that's causing a lot of challenges. The government is in a tricky spot, 
they need to stop the risky borrowing and spending to avoid a big financial problem. But they also need to keep the economy growing to keep people happy and prevent unrest. They've been trying to balance these two needs, but it's becoming more challenging, especially with the recent economic slowdown. Now China's economy is at a point where it could either continue to grow or face serious challenges. The upcoming years will be pivotal for China as it attempts to overcome these hurdles and establish a stable and sustainable economic course. The outcome is still uncertain, but what is clear is the era of unrestrained expansion. What are your thoughts? Share them in the comment section below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. We will see you in the next one.